Okay guys, so now I am going to solve the same problem uh, by using this substitution method, which we uh, briefly discussed in the math review. All right, so what do we do? Well, we start with the budget constraint, right? Or the constraint itself. So PXX plus PYY is equal to income. Well, what do we do? We uh, write one parameter as a function of other. So I'm gonna write Y as a function of X. That means leave Y alone on the left-hand side and set everything else to the right-hand side. That means income minus PXX divided by PY has to be equal to Y. Okay, then what? Plug this into my utility function. So my utility function is going to become a function of one variable only. So it is x to the power alpha. And whenever I see y, I'm going to plug this. So it's i minus px divided by py to the power beta. Okay, so <clears throat> maximizing this utility function subject to this constraint is equivalent to maximizing this utility function by choosing x only, max, by choosing x in R plus, all right? Well, don't forget to distinguish between the choice variables and fixed variables. In this problem, the fixed variables are uh, the utility function, which means the this functional form and therefore the alpha and beta. So we assume that we know those parameters. Actually, so they're constant numbers, real numbers. What else? The px is constant number. We assume we know it. We know the value of it. Py is also constant and income is also constant. So there are only two variables that can change, that can be chosen x and y. So therefore, here I substitute y with this term. So therefore, my uh, entire optimization problem reduced down to a, pr a one parameter optimization problem. And solving it is simple. All you have to do, just take the derivative of the utility function with respect to this change parameter x, set it equal to zero, and solve for it. So this is the standard first order conditions for optimization problem with one variable. All right, so what is the partial derivative of, uh, I'm sorry, the derivative of this term? All right, so du dx is equal to, well, the derivative of the first term, alpha times x to the power alpha minus one, multiplied by the second term, right? I minus uh, pxx divided by py to the power of beta, plus uh, the derivative of the second term times x alpha. So x alpha times the derivative of the second term, which is beta, um, and then does it, I'm gonna apply the chain rule. So beta times i minus pxx divided by py to the power beta minus one times uh, the derivative of inside, which is minus px over py. So all of those are multiplied, and this has to be equal to zero. Okay, so what does that mean? That means, um, so I have one term which is multiplied by something negative, send it to the other side, so it's gonna be positive. So if I do that, I keep this on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I have alpha x alpha minus one, i minus px x divided by py beta equals uh, this term, x alpha beta, px over py, now it's positive because I send it to the other side, remember, multiplied by i pxx divided by py to the power beta minus one. Hmm, very good. So this term and this term is exactly the same. Here it's multiplied by beta, here it's multiplied, I'm sorry, not multiplied, here it's the power of beta, here it's the power of beta minus one. So here, what I can do, I can divide both sides by i minus pxx divided by py, beta minus one. And this doesn't change the equality, right? Assuming that this term is non-zero, obviously. So these are gonna cancel out. This is gonna go away and take b, beta, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have just to the power one. Very good. So let me continue here. What I have on the left hand side, alpha x, alpha minus one, income minus pxx divided by py equals x to the power alpha beta px over py. Very good. Well, we can do even more uh, uh, 
simplification. Divide both sides by x to the power alpha minus 1. So the, uh, the signs, uh, I'm sorry, the equality will not change. So this and this uh, cancels out. This and this alpha cancels out. 1 stays there. So this is x to the power 1, I mean. So that is equivalent to alpha i minus px divided by py equals x beta px over py. So py's are cancelled. I can multiply both signs by py and so they're uh, gone. What else? Um, remember I want to keep um, I want to keep my <clears throat> I want to collect my x on one side and, and all the other constants on the other. So here I have alpha income minus alpha pxx equals beta x px. Very good. So send this term to the other side, alpha pxx. So this is it. This is alpha i because I don't have uh, much space. So here, this is basically xpx parentheses. Uh, beta plus alpha equals alpha income. So divide both sides by px alpha plus beta. So that basically means the x guy, sorry, the uh, because of the space, the x guy is equal to alpha income divided by px times alpha plus beta or beta plus alpha, doesn't matter. Do we get exactly the same result? Mm, yep, we do. Perfect. So that's x star. And how do you find y star? Simple. Remember, y was equal to income minus px divided by py. Once you find x star, oops, plug it back here, you're going to find y star. And if you do the math, you're going to see that y star is also this. All right. So this is how we solve the utility maximization problem in two different ways. And we will keep doing some more examples.